Hello. Welcome to Internet TCI, our monthly program where we explore the global Internet. My name is Rich Wiggins, and as always, I'd like to introduce my partner in crime, Charles Severance. Thanks, Rich. Got a great show for tonight. Uh, we're going to go on the road. Rich goes on the road to the World Wide Web Conference and interviews the inventor of Lycos. Uh, we have an Internet interview. We're going to do some surfing. And uh, all around, I think we're going to have a really good time. So, Rich, what's, uh, what have you been doing in the last month or so since we uh, did our last show? Well, I have been off at the World Wide Web Conference in Boston, and then recently I was off at the American Library Association Convention uh, down in San Antonio. And as always, I've got a, a few Internet artifacts to discuss. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first off, let me hold up this little critter here. You can see this. It says Pearl. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute guys. Hold on. What? Sorry to interrupt. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 yes. Well, what's this, Amy? By the way, I'm the director and producer, Amy. Well, as you guys know, we have this really, really cool way of getting the Internet out to people at a really cool speed. In fact, we got ultimate speed. Ultimate speed. Cool. TCI right. Met That's our thing. That's our gadget here. That's it. This is TCI Met right there. Oh. So, pretty awesome. And this there you go. And this poor is my ma. present. Poor you moi. Guys, you guys oh. have that present. Actually, I can't say it's actually my present. It's TCI's present to you. Well, thank hey, you. This All looks right. Nice and large. It would look like it might fit. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> so. actually, I need a three X L right now. But that is beauty. Uh, okay, let's, okay. Let's, uh, keep rolling. Hey, okay, hey, hey, who's Amy. directing? Sure. <laughs> who's directing? Oh, oh, well, somebody must be directing. Just stay in a two shot for a while. Okay, so pretty Rich, nice. You know, I'm wondering if you brought any pins back from where you were. You know, I'm, I'm curious. I've never seen a pin with the URL on. It. Go ahead. Go ahead. Make my day. <clears throat> a little animated tonight, Charles. Sorry, sorry. It says Pearl. Pearl. What do you suppose this means? P-U-R-L. P-E-R-L is a... Uh, is a programming okay. language. What's P-U-R-L? Pearl. Pearl. Pearloin? Per the nice, nice guess. Um, how about... one, Pearl two? How <laughs> cast ye not pearls before swine? Uh, <laughs> no, it stands for... That reference to me. <laughs> <laughs> so what is... <laughs> if the pearl fits um, something or other. It stands for persistent URL. It's the invention of the folks at OCLC, which is a library organization. And the idea is we want to have a way where you can go and register a URL in a central location, and folks can go and find that URL no matter how often you move from one service provider to another, nor how often you move something that, within whatever server you've got that, stuff That's on. a fundamental problem. That it is a serious a cool idea. fundamental problem. Yeah. And there's been an effort called the Uniform Resource Identifier Group in the IETF, or Internet Engineering Task Force, that's been trying to deal with this issue for three years now right. with interminable discussions and back and forth, how are we going to solve this problem? And the folks at OCLC said, you know, it's better doing something badly than not doing it at all. Oh, that's one of my favorite sayings. And so let's come up with something that works with existing browsers, and you can do something better when you figure out how to do it. Now, the interesting thing is OCLC is a bunch of library people. It's a bunch of library people. And the funny thing is, is usually the computer nerds whip something up quick and dirty, and the library people say, oh, that's quite not quite perfect enough, you know? And now here, finally, the computer nerds are saying, let's, let's come up with a perfect solution, and the library people come up with something quick and dirty. Well, so OCLC is actually... Kudos to the library people. It's, it's actually the library people who are computer nerds ah, all in one building. Well, so we all get credit for this. Right. There's cool. We can spread the credit far and wide. Shall I continue? Yes, continue along. Okay. A couple of episodes ago, we talked about Tommy Raines, a local realtor here in Lansing, and I've been paying a lot of attention to real estate ads because I've just bought a house. Um, and their ad for what they're doing in terms of their presence on the World Wide Web, they weren't our realtor as it happens, but they're bragging about their presence on the web. And they say, now on the Internet, give your home exposure to 24 million people <laughs> through our new homepage on the World Wide Web. And this is an example, with all due respect to Tommy Raines and others, this is an example of sort of the hype of the web. The fact that there is physical connectivity for 24 million people does not necessarily imply that all 24 million of them are going to come and visit your homepage on the World Wide Web. I'm sorry. It's like saying, well, there are a billion people that have telephones around the planet, and therefore, if I publish my phone number in the Lansing phone book, a expose your phone call. number to a, a billion, billion people. people on the planet. At least a billion telemarketers might call you. And in more recent ads, I noticed they've toned it down a little bit. So your, your house Just probably... Just millions and millions? You won't get 24 million bids <laughs> if you put your house um, in their listings. But nice try. Next little artifact I've got 
is something that my girlfriend got me for Christmas. And we're going to uh, make a few nice copies of this. This is a caricature. Well, actually, I don't guess it is a caricature. It looks just like you. Um, of, you. of us on the show. And you can Thank see you. the license plate and everything else. That was, that was uh, when I used to not have hair, I think, is when that was made. So. <laughs> It's well, pretty cool. It looks a little like us, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, it does, actually. It's really good. It's yeah, really good. Okay. The final item I want to talk about, we're always looking for interesting new places where you discover uniform resource locators. We're going to have to give up on this because pretty soon U URLs are going to be everywhere. They're right. just going to be plastered right. all over the place. I was flying back from the web conference, or I'm sorry, from another conference, and um, here's the uh, ad for Hyatt Hotels. And the very first thing they brag about in their virtual office suite that they're now marketing is if you're wired, visit Hyatt at the travel web on the World Wide Web and find out, out all about Hyatt on the web. And then just you just flip through this airline magazine and more and more ads just as a normal part of doing business have URLs right, right. just where they'd have phone Absolutely. numbers. Absolutely. Here's a uh, um, company that sells projection panels. And uh, they've got their URL down at the bottom here. And it says brain tra transplants made easy. This Maybe this is an ad you might want to look at. Huh? <laughs> Brain <laughs> transplants made easy. Well, uh, part of being an ad is so you look at it. You do look at that. That's cool. Yeah. So, so those are my artifacts. What well, I, I got I got a few artifacts. One of the things I'll put my my badge on. I went to a, a conference in San Diego called uh, Supercomputing '95, which is a great conference. It's sort of both uh, high performance computing and uh, and uh, high performance communication. And uh, I taught a class on uh, K-12 use of the internet with Brian Lindo who was on our show number two, mm -hmm. and we talked about K-12 stuff. And uh, I noticed that you, you didn't get me anything on that last trip, but, uh, but I brought a few, few things back. Um, this here is a really, really nice T-shirt. Mm -hmm. This is a T-shirt, and I, I paid for this, actually. Okay? I didn't get this free. Um, it's a T-shirt for uh, Supercomputing 95 in, uh, in San Diego, California. And... Uh, I got this because Amy, our director, we never get anything for Amy. I'm always getting stuff for you. Where the so, heck are you going? So I'm going to give something to Amy, our director, because, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of unfair that only, only uh, Rich gets stuff. And so here's something, here's something for Amy, our director, uh, supercomputing t-shirt. So, uh, so there we go. You know, so, yeah, well, thanks for the sweatshirt. I really appreciate that sweatshirt. So, uh, You're taking on the road to new extremes, Mr. Well, Stiles. Or at least I'm on the hallway, on the hallway with Chuck and Rich. Now, <clears throat> so that you wouldn't feel so bad, I got you something, too. This is a... A one-way ticket to San Diego. No, this is a, a thing called a pod. This is not just any pod. This is a high-performance computing pod. It's from uh, uh, Argonne National Laboratory. Oh, it's about okay. a little piece of software called BlockSolve95. So I brought you back. A little pog. There you go. A pog. Well, and I'm sure you spent big bucks on this. No, I did. I did. I, I spent a lot for well, that. Well, thank you, Charles. It, it warms the cockles of my heart. Now, now actually, this the, the, one of the neatest evenings I ever had happened at this conference. We're and, not um, done yet. So now, no, we're not. Not we're not done yet. Um, Wait, leaving the room is one thing, Charles, but disrobing, I don't know. Well, this this story takes a little <laughs> requires a little bit of a. Uh, <coughs> um, this this story requires a little bit of a. Uh, oh shoot, where is it? There we are. You are out of control, Charles. <laughs> the evening activities... <laughs> this isn't going to work. <laughs> the evening activities of uh, one of the evenings of this, IBM Corporation rented out uh, the Naval Air Station at Miramar. Uh -huh. And uh, what they did is they rented the entire hangar. It was about 400 yards from the runway. And these airplanes were taken off about every five minutes with afterburners on. It was really, really cool. And we ate steaks, and they had a band there. So it was really, really, really neat. So in addition to the pog, I brought you back a cup. Oh. Okay, I brought you back a coffee cup. It's a Top Gun coffee cup from the United States Naval Fighter Weapons School. So there you go, in addition to your pog. Thank you. It's a place where I can keep my pog. Exactly. Thanks, so I, I, think that's, nice. I think that's all the dumb things I'm going to do for a little while. Please. So have we opened Internet Tailhook? I mean, TCI, can we... Uh, exactly. Oh, yeah. Are you ready to move on to the next let's, segment? Let's get rolling. Okay, here we go. In our Internet for Everyone segment tonight, Rich is going to talk about a very popular topic on the Internet, Internet search engines. My wife just got started working on the Internet, 
And the internet search is one of the most common things that she does. And to her, it's one of the things that makes the internet usable and useful. So Rich, tell us a little bit about internet search engines. Thanks, Chuck. Last weekend, I was off in San Antonio at the American Library Association Midwinter Convention, and I gave a presentation on this subject. And what I'm going to do is give a sort of a capsule summary of part of the talk that I gave at the ALA. So this talk was at San Antonio, and what I'm going to talk about is part two of what I gave in the presentation, a little bit about web spiders and indexes and uh, what they can do for us. And we'll talk about a few sample searches to begin with. Um, some definitions. When I use the word catalog, by that I mean a handcrafted list of documents, and that's more like a card catalog or an online catalog in a library where some human beings spend some time putting together the list of what you want to find. That's to be distinguished from an automated index. Now, that's a software robot like Lycos or Webcrawler or AltaVista, and that's a piece of software that's going to go and find stuff on the web, sort of harvesting new and updated resources on your behalf. You also hear the word search engine a lot, and that's sometimes misused. When I say search engine, I think of the software that actually allows the search to be performed, not the service. So Lycos is a search service, and it has a, a component, which is a search engine. The word spider is used in a couple of different ways. One way is it's sort of a generic term referring to a web search service. Also, it's used more specifically to refer to the component that goes and surfs the web, finding new resources. So as one example of a kind of a search you might do, I went looking to find hotels at the American Library Association convention. So I visited a new search engine called Alta Vista, and I did a search for ALA Midwinter 96 Hotels. And lo and behold, I had a pretty good list of the hotels that are available come up as the very top item from the search. So this worked fairly well. Well, for comparison's sake, I went off to a different search engine, InfoSeek, I'm sorry, search service, I violated my own rule, and I asked InfoSeek for the exact same list of items, ALA Midwinter 96 Hotels. Now this time, I got a different top item on the list, ALA Midwinter 96 Map of the Conference Area. Turned out to still be something that was relevant, something I was looking for, but in the way that it weights the search terms and the way it searches the index, Alta Vista had a slightly different take on what the uh, most important or highest weighted item ought to be. And that's perfectly fine. You would expect that different tools react in different ways. Let's go through an example of a kind of search where you find failure. Here I was looking for a piece of software called Quark Express. And so I typed the word Quark in as my keyword in the Lycos search engine. Well, the first response I got back, the top of the list item, was why five quarks aren't enough. And that's using quark in the, term, uh, in the sense of a physics term, um, a, a particle. And obviously, that's not what I was looking for. So I look at the next item on the list. It's a press release for a Deep Space Nine episode, The House of Quark. Well, quark is a character in Star Trek these days. Once again, Lycos is doing a reasonable job here. Quark is the word I'm looking for, and it returns another quark to me. So I said, let's refine my search a little bit. And this time, I went looking for quark express, both words as a term. And this time, at the top of the list, scoring one on the list is, in fact, a mailing list dealing with Quark Express, the software I'm looking for. The point of this little story is that these search services really don't have a way of distinguishing different homonyms. And if you use one word in one context, it's going to find all the other contexts, whether they apply or not. Now, as another example here, I went looking for American tele Telephone and Telegraph recently. I was looking for AT&T, and I was using the Lycos service. And lo and behold, I got a whole bunch of unrelated documents, things that I wasn't really interested in. They weren't really the AT&T I was looking for. But up at the top of the page, I got an ad for AT&T. And at first, I thought this was an amazing accident, that it was just serendipity. But as we'll see in the interview with uh, Dr. Michael Malden, the inventor of Lycos, the truth of the matter is they're being very clever, and they're looking at our search terms, and they're trying to pick ads that correspond to what we're looking for. There's another problem when you go looking for AT&T. It turns out AT ampersand T is sort of an invalid piece of HTML, and your search service is going to have to be very smart, and it's going to have to look for AT ampersand AMP semicolon T in order for things to match. And that's one reason why sometimes when you do this kind of search, things don't work the way you'd expect them to. 
Another challenge that's faced by these search services is eliminating duplicates. Here I went looking for something to do with the Network for Excellence in Manufacturing, and that's a project I'm associated with at Michigan State. And I came up with two different documents. Well, they look different, but if you look closely enough, it turns out it, they're exactly the same document. And the reason for the confusion is we have slightly different versions of the host name, www.meep.org versus web.meep.org. And at this point, Lycos wasn't smart enough to recognize that those are in, sa in fact the same physical host. And someday it will be smart enough to recognize that, and it won't present them as two duplicate entries. Now, Dex's new Alta Vista service is a particularly strong search engine. And what I've found is it's especially good when you give it multiple terms. So if you give it a whole lot of words to look for, it seems to weight them together very nicely and find exactly what you're after. And Dennis Boone, who works on my staff, recently made a discovery. He typed NIM Online Shared Bookmark Facility, and Alta Vista did a wonderful job of finding the place where we allow folks to delete items in our shared bookmark file. Now, this is a place where we let people get together and find good resources and comment on them as a group. And we had committed a cardinal sin of computing, which is called security through obscurity. There's a rule in computing that says you have to password protect everything. And I hate to admit it, for this facility, we weren't doing that. And we discovered that this stuff, which had been revealed to nobody on the global internet, had been discovered by Alta Vista. And what was our reaction? Of course, we implemented password security the next day. So one thing about these search facilities is they'll find your stuff whether you like it or not. Now, there are, as I've said, there's sort of a distinction we need to keep in mind between the multiplicity of search services that are more like um, robotic or automated facilities and handcrafted catalogs. And Yahoo is the preeminent handcrafted catalog of the World Wide Web. And by that, we mean we have a bunch of folks out in California whose job it is to go and find useful starting points on the Internet. And we recently got some interesting email from an irate alum at Michigan State who was just a little bit upset for some reason that Michigan State had been cataloged by the Yahoo people as a K-12 through institution. Now, they were nice enough after a short email uh, message, a very terse email, to go and fix that problem. We think maybe a University of Michigan graduate is working out at Yahoo. <laughs> One question about a service like Yahoo is, can they really keep up with everything that they aspire to keep up with? Now, for instance, if we go to their listing of all the universities in the world, and they have a wonderful list of all the universities in the world, they have under Michigan State's entry a pointer to our homepage, but also a list of our clubs and organizations, of which they have five, and our departments of programs, of which they have nine. Well, the truth of the matter is we already have on the web dozens and dozens of MSU programs and departments. And so my claim is the Yahoo people are making a mistake. They should not undertake to go and catalog all of the departments at Michigan State University or any other university. They should leave that up to us. And they should take on the higher level task of providing the list of all the universities. They're going to have to fi figure out what is the appropriate level of granularity for their catalog. Now, these catalogs and indexes are ways that we can help figure out how fast this web is growing, and it is astonishing. We'll hear some statistics from Dr. Malden later on. Here are some of the numbers, though. They count almost 5 million web documents, um, 8 million binary objects. They've got 31 gigabytes of data indexed, and Alta Vista similarly counts 16 million pages on the World Wide Web. Now, here's a graph that the Yahoo people, I'm sorry, the Lycos people are putting up that shows the growth of the web according to their summary, and then they're trying to compare themselves to the other services that are out there. Now, I've had a discussion with them where I think they're being a, just a little bit unfair Back here. Some of the other services that are out there are automated indexes like they are, and that's a fair comparison. And the Lycos people are telling us, look, we do a good job of having almost as much stuff indexed as there is on the World Wide Web. But comparing themselves to Yahoo in this respect isn't really quite as fair, because Yahoo is a list of starting points. It's a handcrafted catalog. And it is inherently the case that Yahoo will never have the same amount of stuff in its catalog as an automated search service or an index like Lycos. Lycos will always have much, much more stuff to look at. And the way I like to summarize this is, if you are looking for the University of Tasmania, go to Yahoo. That's a starting point, and Yahoo is a good place to find starting points. If instead you are trying to find all the pages on the World Wide Web that have the word Tasmania somewhere within the document, 
go to Lycos or AltaVista or a service like that because they are full text, complete indexes, and they'll find all of those pages for you real quick. So that's a little bit of an overview of what we're up to when we're using these search engines and uh, catalogs. That, that was really <clears throat> real good. When I first got Windows 95, I kept searching for the Microsoft page, and I'd go to the search and I'd type Microsoft, and every time it would have a little Microsoft ad, and I figured out also that, that uh, it's, uh, it's right there. Um, I was talking uh, last week with some friends of mine from DEC, and they were telling me about Alta Vista, and, and uh, I guess they hadn't quite announced it, but sort of as soon as it was, av was available, it was doing sort of a million transactions per day, sort of yes. before they even announced it and turned it on. So there is such a demand for this. And as I said at the beginning, my wife just got going on the internet because a class she's taken sort of forced her to do that, and she's realized that the, the way you get stuff done on the internet is you go in that search. And that's the good starting point to, to get things started. So, well, one thing that I've found personally is, you know, we all get into the habit of putting the cool sites we find into our bookmark file. And I found that when the bookmark file grows to a certain size, you never go back and visit those sites again right. like you expected to. So eventually, you, you calm down about it, and you only put in the bookmark what you really, in, in fact, need daily. Right. And you use the search index. Even to go for and things find. you sort of know where they're at, you, because they're so quick and they're so efficient, you just know it. The quickest way to do it is to go all the way to California, type a word in, look up in a database in California, but that's still the most convenient and exactly the quickest so. way to do that. So uh, I'll point one thing out about your the Yahoo. Perhaps that wasn't a mistake. That wasn't a cut down. You know, you know, if, if I think of institutions that are heavily involved in K-12 and, you know, really nice outreach places, Michigan State comes right to mind. So perhaps that was a compliment. That, uh, to call our university a K-12 institution. No, just to say that's heavily the best involved rationalization I've ever heard or the best epitaph to your career I've ever heard. Oh, okay. Well, I guess on that note, uh, <laughs> I guess that's the end of our segment. Um, let's move on. At the recent World Wide Web conference in Boston, I had the opportunity to interview Dr. Michael Malden, who is the inventor of the Lycos spider. Let's see what Dr. Malden, or Fuzzy, has to say about Lycos. I'd been working on automated exploration tasks for many years. I wrote, uh, I was one of a team that wrote the first automated rogue player. This was a computer game where you would explore a cave. We wrote a program that would explore the cave, and it actually won. It was written up in Scientific American. After that, I was involved in Tiny Muds, and I wrote Julia, which is an agent that logs into Muds, explores the world, interacts with people, and then answers questions about how to get around the world. So when the World Wide Web first hit uh, consciousness at Carnegie Mellon, you know, in early 94, I was the obvious guy to explore the World Wide Web. So I wrote a program that's a spider that goes out and it finds what files are out there, brings them back, sorts and collates them, and then I hooked on an information retrieval engine. Um, and then I went one better. I said, all right, well, I've got all this neat stuff here. I'll let other people use it. And that was my big mistake. And then thousands and thousands of people started using my program, and it's grown until it's you know, you know, five, ten million today. Uh, on a given day, we serve well over a million queries. Um, that's one question answered successfully to one person. We're named after the Lycosidae spider, and one thing that Lycosidae is known for is that it's active at night. So it kind of fits. Our spiders go out at night and they surf the World Wide Web. Um, we're adding about two million URLs or web pages a week at this point. And uh, that's about the same rate that the web is growing, so we're just kind of keeping up with the great rate of growth of the web. You think the web is growing by two million URLs, roughly two million documents per week? Yes. Have you tried to plot a curve? It's, a, it's growing by a factor of seven every year. Uh, so it's an exponential curve, it's not linear. Um, and uh, you know we're keeping it tracked. The, the average internet user now just got there. And we try to keep it simple. One box, type in some words, hit return, and your answers come back. And you know, we have eight-year-olds who send us email. I don't know how they know how to send email at age eight, but they send it saying, yours is the easiest search engine to use. So keeping the front that people see simple while leaving the options for the more experienced user is our, our approach to how the interface should be. And you know, people want to have a herd-like instinct. They want to know where do other people go. So we have the Lycos 250, which is the 
250 uh, most popular sites is measured by, by pointers. Uh, we also recently acquired a company called Point Communications. Uh, they provide you know, hand-edited reviews of about 5,000 sites, the top 5% of all sites on the web. And uh, they, they provide a three-point uh, ranking scale, presentation, content, and experience. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to meet the needs of the user who comes in and either knows where he's going and just wants a few words, or someone who's brand new to the net and needs to have an idea what's the best uh, pet resource, what's the best movie review source on the, on the web. And, and that way we cover both ends of the spectrum. Okay. Presently have uh, 49 companies that advertise with Lycos, uh, a very large collection of, of firms, and we're very pleased with that. Companies that range from AT&T to Microsoft to uh, Prudential and MasterCard and, and many, many others. Advertising for like us, if, if the advertiser is interested in that, can be associated with keyword, so you can actually tie your ad to the particular word that someone may search on. The, uh, the advertising is based on how many people actually view the ad. And with like us, with a large amount of people that we're pleased to say can through the site each and every day, we look at in the millions and millions of uh, viewers or users of our product as opposed to individuals. But the, the I can give it to you on a, a uh, CPM basis, and it's twenty dollar. It's a twenty dollar CPM for like us, which translates into roughly twenty. $20,000 per million viewings of an ad. Uh, internet advertising today is remarkably inexpensive compared to uh, other forms of media buy. Um, and I think the reasons for that are uh, quite straightforward. The uh, media companies themselves and the advertisers and the agencies are really learning about internet advertising in terms of what works and what doesn't, trying to get a good appreciation of the different services that provide value. As a result, the cost of advertising on the web is relatively low compared to anything else that you might find out there. We presently have 16.4 million URLs URLs or web addresses in the Lycos catalog. Uh, that is larger uh, than all of the other competitors in this marketplace combined. So it's just a tremendously large database. Lycos adds over 2 million URLs to its database each and every week. Uh, adding 2 million URLs, that simple number at 2 million is larger than any other catalog of the internet. Bruce, that, was a, that was a neat report. Um, one thing that sort of impressed me as I watched that was they think of themselves as, in many ways, as media. You know, they're, they're sort of broadcasters. They're, they're selling ads, and the search is sort of the thing to get the people to view the ads, and, and they're very much uh, media, and I thought that was really neat. Yeah, there's a couple of points I'd like to make along those lines. Um, even though they are media underneath, they have some excellent technology, yes. and Dr. Malden is obviously a pretty smart critter to put all this stuff together. Um, another important point is, I think, we need both what they're doing with the Lycos 250 or the Yahoo handcrafted catalog that I was talking about earlier and the complete search index. And it's still astonishing to me how fast and effective this is. Um, Dr. Malden told me that they have something like 20 CPUs on four boxes and there's about 200 outstanding queries running at any one time. What, what kind of a network connection do they have? Uh, they've gone to a T3 recently. Which is 45 megabits per second. Yes. Which is faster than most local area networks. Yes. That's and so they're, they're harvesting a huge amount of information. They're handling a huge number of queries. And as Dr. Malden and I discussed it, he's, you know, I said, can you scale up? Can you handle a billion URLs? Right. Which at the current growth rate, the, the web's going to have a billion URLs. And he's, he's confident that, in fact, he can. Sounds cool. Yeah. On Tech Talk, <clears throat> Rich is going to tell us about one of his inventions. It's called Web TV, and what it does is it surfs the web on a cable channel so people can watch. He actually got written up in the San Jose Mercury News on the front page. Now, it's at the bottom of the front page, but it is a front page article about the Web TV channel. So, Rich, tell us a little bit about the Web Channel. Okay, Chuck. Well, first, let's get the name straight. It's called the Web Channel. Okay. And then the software we wrote, we call TV Spider Software. Oh, okay. Now, the idea here is we, of course, here in East Lansing and Meridian, we have a lot of folks that are going to be plugging into the information superhighway using a high-speed cable modem. And we thought, gee, wouldn't it be nice if we could demonstrate what the World Wide Web is like for folks who have not yet subscribed to that service or who have not otherwise seen what the web is like. I mean, sometimes you read about this in a newspaper, um, but you don't really get a feeling for what's out there on the web. So we said, maybe we could put together some software that would go and surf the web for you automatically, and we'll just show it on TV. 
Well, we also needed to have some sort of a channel that we could put it on. And it turned out that our, our own local origination channel, where our program is seen here in, in the TCI Mid-Michigan system, was available during certain hours when they weren't running other programming. And our producer, Amy Leahy, was kind enough to say, yeah, let's give it a try. And so for a couple of months now, we've been surfing the web in an automatic, programmatic fashion. Here's the logo for the web channel. Um, that's one of the pages that you see. We'll show you the logo uh, um, when the service fires up. Now, to talk about what the heck is the web channel, it's really just a way that we can demonstrate the web to TV viewers. It's a sort of an automated robot that surfs the web on your behalf. This robot was developed by a colleague of mine, Dennis Boone, and he developed it um, in his sort of spare time, um, something that works under the Unix operating system. Now, the way this works is the computer console is translated into video form and displayed over a TV channel. Here on TCI of Mid-Michigan, it's displayed on our local origination channel, which is channel 11, and it's carried when there isn't any other programming scheduled. The software, as I said, is called TV Spider. Dennis implemented it on an Intel-based PC running the Linux or Linux operating system. And it could use any web browser. Currently, we're using the Netscape browser running under the X Windows system. And the hardware we're using was provided by Baker Computer Corporation of Lansing, Michigan. Well, what does this thing do? Well, it's got a couple of lists of sites that it needs to visit. Sort of the basic information list is a small set of pages that describe the software, um, what TCI is doing here in mid-Michigan with the internet, and what our other sponsors are up to. Then we have some samples of various cool websites that we want to visit. Online newspapers, weather sites, real-time images, popular information sites, and so forth. So what the software does is first it visits the basic list, and then it takes five samples from the cool list, and then it goes back and goes through the basic list and so forth. For each page that it visits, it pulls the page down, and then the software simulates striking the down arrow. So you sort of scroll down through a page for a little while. Now some pages are so short that the page just sort of sits there, and hitting the down arrow doesn't do anything. Others have a lot of content, and you sort of get the um, sort of get the effect as if a human being was sitting there paging through. Once it's done going down through the site a little bit, then it says, okay, now it's time to go on to the next site. Well, what are the places that it visits? We go to the Raleigh News and Observer Nando Times. We go to the Detroit News. Uh, we visit the MSU weather pages. Why not? We go to the C-SPAN book notes preview. We go and see what's coming up on next week's Star Trek Voyager. And we go to the, the WAN ads that are in the online edition of the San Jose Mercury News. Then we visit KPIX Television, which is doing kind of a cool thing on the web. They've got five sample frames from what they have broadcast within the last few minutes. And if you think about this, this is kind of an interesting overlap. We have a, a cable TV channel here in mid-Michigan that's showing something that's obtained over the web, and it's from a TV station in San Francisco that's capturing frames which they normally broadcast over the air out in San Francisco. So we're really merging the media here in a little bit, in a, sort of an interesting way. Then we go to our real-time site where you can see an image of the San Francisco Bay Bridge in real time. And for another real-time site, we go and visit the city of Seattle. They have a map showing real-time traffic flow. Is there a traffic jam in Seattle? And finally, just for yucks, we go to the White House homepage. Here's a diagram showing a little bit about how the spider software works. We're using the same cable modem technology that we use here as we tape Internet TCI, the same kind of cable modem that I have in my den right now, and that provides us with good high-speed access to the greater Internet. The TV Spider software is sitting on, as I said, an Intel PC running um, a Unix operating system, <coughs> and that software um, is going and doing the surfing, pulling down the pages over the net. We have a simple outboard VGA to NTSC scan converter, and that's just a little box that you can plug in to your VGA port, and it will translate the VGA signal to the familiar, to some anyhow, NTSC, which some people say stands for never twice the same color, but that's the North American standard for color TV. So from there, we take that video, and the TCI folks just put it out on the local TCI network on channel 11 when they don't have other programming to show. And in a nutshell, that's how the TV Spider software works and how we've implemented the web channel here in mid-Michigan. So um, <coughs> have you got comments from people who watch the web channel? 
Yeah, we've gotten um, several comments. I recently um, heard from the folks that run the CNET show, and they want to see a little bit of footage of what this thing looks like. And so we're going to send them a tape at some point. Unfortunately, one thing I have to report, quite honestly, is in some ways, today's web isn't really all that exciting when you're just sitting there looking at it in a static way. And we're so used to moving pictures on television that television is more kinetic than the web is right now. Now, as Java comes along and as we get more moving images on screen, maybe the, what we're showing will be more exciting. But we've tried to pick content that's important. Um, content that's going to change, like these newspaper right. pages. So you're actually seeing headlines of today's news as you look at this stuff. And we hope that'll provide some interest for our viewers. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I can imagine uh, some poor couch potato sitting at their TV and sort of getting, you, getting with their remote and wanting to click on a hot link. And of course, it's not going to happen. They click on the hot link because they want to go see that hot link. Well, let me, let me talk about that for a second. We do want to come to a point where we can have more interactivity. We haven't figured out a way to accept a submitted URL from somebody because we know the first thing that will happen is some bozo right. will pick the dirtiest page on the internet and submit that. Right. But if we could figure out how to apply that against a list of cool sites, then we might do that. Another thing we want to do is we want to train the software to go to various what's new lists and randomly pick a new site every once in a while and go visit that. Right, or, or places that have like some two-way stuff where they have you know buttons that people mm -hmm. can push. You can yeah. feed that back in. I think, and people can vote where to go next. I think mm -hmm. that'd be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So it sounds really neat. We're having fun with it. Good. internet interview today comes to us from Madison, Wisconsin. Madison was one of the first stations to show internet TCI outside the Lansing area and we're shown there on Channel 4 and we're really excited to get a, get a segment from Madison, Wisconsin. Madison's one of my all-time favorite towns. Like East Lansing, it's also a college town. And uh, I like visiting college campuses and looking at how pretty college campuses are. And uh, Madison is actually my favorite. Michigan State is like my second or third favorite. But the thing that Madison has is in the middle of their college campus, I don't know how they pulled this off, they have a big lake that has sailboats and they have a student union at which they serve beer. Now, no matter what we do at Michigan State University with landscaping and gardens, it is tough to top Madison, Wisconsin for overall beauty. So in our segment, Elizabeth Payne reports on us and interview reports for us and interviews Pete Johnson who's a publisher of the desktop journal Hi, I'm Elizabeth Payne reporting for Internet TCI, and we are in Madison, Wisconsin. Sitting with me is Peter Johnson, publisher of the Desktop Journal, uh, Wisconsin's free computer publication. Peter, we are at a seminar today, or actually many seminars are taking place here in Madison, talking about the Internet. To what extent has the Internet reached Madison? Um, actually, uh, because of... Uh Madison's infrastructure, it's the state capital. Um, there's a very large university here. Uh, the internet is uh, very pervasive throughout uh, throughout town. Um, the student body has free internet access as well as uh, the government agencies. So who are the providers here and, and how many do we have? Who are the providers and how do they compare with maybe a, an America Online or a CompuServe? Well, um, your local internet service provider is not, it's not an online service per se. It's not a, an America Online or a CompuServe. Um, they provide you with an internet hookup uh, and it comes in many different forms. There are probably about a dozen different providers here in town. Um, small inde independent providers as well as um, some larger uh, phone companies are also uh, jumping into the game. And who are they? What are some of the names out there? Um, we're looking at uh, Full Feed, uh, Global Dialogue, Internet, uh, Internet Express, um, so many more. Um, as I mentioned, sorry to cut you off, as I mentioned, sure. there were uh, a bunch of different seminars going on today, as basic as how to use the Internet or how to use email to your best business advantage, mm -hmm. different things like that. These are some of the things that are there today for people who are using Internet in terms of personal use and business use. What are some of the things that are on the horizon? Well, I really think that uh, the Internet uh, can be the business tool of the 90s, um, and it can be used to uh, promote your business as 
well as uh, communicate with branch offices um, and be an effective uh, tool for um, sales. And uh, on the horizon, uh, well, uh, there are many different uh, Many different uh, bandwidths uh, coming to town. Um, in fact, uh, TCI is bringing uh, at-home service, which is um, uh, internet service over cable lines. Um, in the future, I think we'll see uh, faster data transfer rates and uh, and possibly more things uh, available to us. Thank you very much, Peter Johnson, publisher of Desktop Journal, Wisconsin's free computer publication. We are reporting from Madison, Wisconsin, reporting for Internet TCI. I'm Elizabeth Payne. Thanks, Elizabeth. That was a neat report. I was at a conference a couple of months ago driving around in my car. It was in Milwaukee, and uh, I kept listening to the radio, public radio, and uh, they have all kinds of talk shows about the Internet on this, uh, the, the Madison, uh, University of Madison's public radio station. So while we in East Lansing have the corner on television shows based on the Internet, I think Madison has the highest per capita radio show per Internet. So the Internet radio show per person. So cool. <laughs> Now let's see what's happening in the news of the net. First off, Digital Equipment Corporation has announced a new search service, Alta Vista. They claim this index is as comprehensive as Lycos, and one feature of Alta Vista is that it indexes Usenet as well as the World Wide Web. It was developed in summer of 1995 by DEC researchers in Palo Alto, California, and not surprisingly, it runs on DEC Alpha hardware. They claim that their spider can harvest over 2.5 million pages per day, and they are already, within a month after announcing the service, handling over a million queries per day. The Netscape Communications Corporation has decided that internal websites, or intranets, are an important avenue for business exploration. So they formed some partnerships to target these intranets as a market. Internal websites, or intranets, are produced for internal documents and data by a corporation or other organization. Netscape's partners in this area include Anderson Consulting, EDS, Claremont Technology Group, and ICL. A church has won one of the first internet copyright cases. A person who was opposed to the Church of Scientology posted a number of internal documents that that church considered to be secret on Usenet. He found those documents in another court case and made them available on the net and the church sued, claiming that this was an example of copyright infringement. A federal judge has agreed with the church and awarded them a judgment. Phil Zimmerman, the author of software called Pretty Good Privacy, or PGP, has been cleared. The federal government has dropped an investigation against Zimmerman that's gone on for several years. This software was distributed worldwide over the internet, and Zimmerman has claimed that he was not involved <coughs> in that worldwide distribution. Encryption software is considered to be a weapon by the U.S. federal government, and therefore it is illegal to distribute overseas. A U.S. attorney who was involved with the case said, I caution people against concluding that the Internet is now totally free for export. CompuServe has been forced to drop a number of Usenet news groups from delivery to its customers in Germany. The German government identified over 200 news groups that allegedly contained pornographic material. And because CompuServe didn't have a mechanism to deny access only in one country, all subscribers worldwide were denied access to these groups. There was an uproar from many CompuServe customers because this raises the specter of national governments deciding which news groups they don't like and that having impact on who worldwide will be able to look at what news groups. The Simon Wiesenthal Center has demanded that there should be banning of hate speech on the Internet. They've asked for agreements from Internet service providers to drop any users who promote any form of racism, anti-Semitism, or mayhem or violence. They want universities, online utilities, and other Internet service providers to agree to a pledge that they will censor such activity. Not surprisingly, free speech organizations hope that these agreements are not solidified. The New York Times has announced a presence on the World Wide Web. Not only is this a page um, establishing their presence on the web, but it includes most of the text 
of full editions of the New York Times every day and will also include archives. The Times has announced that throughout the United States, people will be able to access, at least for the foreseeable future, for free. And they're exploring online advertising and other ways that they can make revenue from this free service. And that's tonight's News in the Net. It's time to do a little bit of net surfing, but before we do that, I'd like to talk about a lasting monument that I have arranged for for our television program. We have a so baseball team that's starting up in Lansing, the Lansing Lug Nuts, right. which has gotten a little bit of notoriety just for the name of the team. And they have a program where you can buy a brick to support the team. This will go on the walkway. Not, not this. This is a replica. Um, the bricks will go in a walkway of all the folks who have donated. So I made a donation in the name of our program, and our brick will be labeled for all posterity, Internet TCI, Chuck and Rich, on the road. So you're sort of walking along the road, and thousands of people will step on our brick. Yeah, but it's, it's just another brick in the wall, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I take a look at it? Please. Oh, neat. Oh, okay. It's a so they mail you a little cardboard replica. Oh, neat. I can't, I can't wait till the baseball season opens. Sometime this spring. That's pretty neat. Internet TCI will physically go on the road. <clears throat> so I, what, what I think we're going to do first on this surfing is we're going to actually do some searching. We're going to use Alta Vista and we're going to do Lycos. So let me just jump ahead and go right to Lycos. Um, okay. What? Let's look for the lug nuts. Oh, okay. There we go. Let's take a look at the lug nuts. <coughs> so okay. here's Lycos. Seems to have finished. We searched for Lansing Light Lug Nuts. Oh, they, they, 18 million URLs. Yeah, they, they want to tell us that, right? Yes. 18 million. Ogilvy, two of two terms. Other customers' phones keep going. Sojourn, that's the folks here in town. They found the word Lansing. Oh, Here's an article. Here we go. Next story to return. Charting, well, let's, let's see what, what it is. Charting the majors. Oh. So it's an archive article out of the Detroit News. Right, September 1st, 1995. Let's page on down a little bit. Lugnuts hire general manager. Yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I, uh, and if you think about it, that sort of becomes like an encyclopedia because it went back into some old stuff. Do me a favor, Chuck. Yeah. Go to options. Options. Preferences. Okay. Go to fonts. <laughs> Choose font there. And let's go up this list and up here, pick a bigger font. 16? 14. Okay. And then go up and pick Arial. Some people are picky. But now I'll go down here. Click OK. Now. There we go. Our audience will be able to read what we're... What and our audience will now be able to do options preferences, too. Right, Shoot, someday we ought to just sit for a whole hour and talk about all the things you can do in clicking in Netscape. Oh, that'll be exciting. Yeah. Could be a special. Could be maybe our Christmas special, maybe. <laughs> So, okay. Um, let's, oh, let's go back to Lycos and um, let's search, oops, let's go back, oops, forwards. Let's search for our, probably what most people are searching for when they're going to Lycos. It's probably one of the more common queries. Internet, okay. Internet TCI is probably one of them. Um, I, did you ask them how often people look, are looking for Internet TCI? Um, no, I didn't, and I didn't have anything volunteered by the inventor of the most popular web index either about Son of a gun. So here we go, looking for eight, and it's He did say, but how about those lug nuts? How are they doing? <laughs> exactly. Oh, there we are. First item. The first item. We did it. Look at that. A television show. Look at it. There's our logo. Let's see, is my name in here anywhere? City Animation. You, re you remember uh, the Steve Martin movie, The Jerk, when he finds out he's in yeah, the phone book? Yeah, that's one of my favorite scenes. I'm somebody. Things are going to start happening to me now. now. <laughs> I love so it. we're in like us. And oh my goodness! And things are going. We're in the phone book. And things are going to start happening to us now. And, that, and of course, we know what happened in the movie, right? Uh, terrible things, as I recall. There was a guy right across the road that was going to shoot him with a gun. And as soon as that scene, he started shooting at him. What a great movie! What a great. Movie. Well. Okay, well, let's try Alta Vista. Again, Alta Vista is kind of new on the scene, and I think a lot of people uh, are real excited about Alta Vista. Uh, where is it? Did you had a bookmark to No, I didn't. Okay, we'll just Okay, Alta Vista. T-A-V-I-S-T-A dot, dot digital. Digital dot com. Yep, and one thing that's kind of funny is deck um, is a little bit schizoid. They have digital and deck dot com, yep. and they ought to
to make it easier to find AltaVista, although it hasn't stopped people from doing a million searches a day. Right. But AltaVista.deck.com ought to work too, in my right. opinion. Okay, so now we're going to search for uh, Internet TCI to find a vacation spot, kayak sailing in the San Juan Islands. Okay. Oh, here we go. We're still coming. <coughs> Uh, okay, the law of the net, things take a while. TCI networking. Well, let's TCI try refining our search if we don't come TCI up at the top here. TCI Philippines. Well, lots of TCI, TCI stuff. TCI background, networking, fiber optic, let's IO go, boards. Let's go back and refine all our right. search. These are all the people that, that we ought to talk to and have, uh, put our show on. Yeah. Okay, what would just, you do? I would just scroll back up to the top there. Right, let's put that in quotes and see what happens. What, what, what does this mean we're doing here? This tells Alta Vista that we want it as a phrase, so don't go looking for the word TCI and the word Internet somewhere else in the document, but in this order and next to each other. Okay, okay. Did that come back? I don't know. Sometimes oh, yep. it's fast. There you go. Um, so let's, let's see what we have here. Oh, <laughs> there we are. There's show number five, and there's one of, the news, one of my news segments. Free software can hang up phone tabs. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's one of my news articles. Well, now, see, this is one of the things about search engines out there. Um, yeah. they, they're going to weight everything equally in their index. And um, so you don't know whether you're finding the top-level part of a document or whether you're jumping straight down into the middle or the very lowest layer. Right. They're all weighted equally. But one way or another, we jumped off pretty quickly yeah. using both of these facilities. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. So, um... Got let's some other see. places to go, Chuck? Yeah, let's see. I want to go to one of my, uh, the cool pages that I, that I came across, my favorite pages I came across in the last month or so. How many times have you been to see Toy Story? Zero. You've only been to see, phew, I've been there twice. I mean, I pretty, pretty much always go to well, see Toy Story. Well, you're a dad, you know. Every weekend. Well, I don't know. It's still required. It's required viewing for a computer person. All right, all right. So What's here's on the Toy web? Story. Oh, it's great. They got, it, it's, it's sort of like a part of what you would get on a CD-ROM. You get to know... <coughs> who's playing it, you get to know the characters, where's the main characters. Uh, we don't have audio right now, but uh, they have little clips, they talk about the characters, so here's like Woody and, and Buzz Lightyear. The Infinity and Beyond, you see, I mean, I, I, it's... How many times have you seen this movie? Two, uh, not enough times. Uh. So we can click on, uh, let's see, uh, let's go to Buzz Lightyear, and um, what you find is you find out about the person, um, He, and then, let's see, if you click somewhere, you get to hear him, voice generator, see so here, but we don't have the audio. And then you also get to see who plays it, which oh, is kind of interesting, because cool. I'm not sure, you know, it's Disney sort of is making it real clear. Of course, Tim Allen is well known, Home Improvement, and, uh, <coughs> and so here it talks a little bit about Tim Allen, and there's Tim Allen. Oh, that's nice. Lightyear. So I thought, uh, just a, it's really just a very beautiful... Uh, and, and the graphics are, I thought, were mm -hmm. really phenomenal. Um, one real quick thing to follow up on it is um, the company who made Toy Story, computer company called Pixar. They, um, of course, here, the first oh, thing you gee. see. <laughs> Want some stock? Yeah, let's have some Pixar stock. Um, made Steve Jobs a millionaire, right. or a billionaire again. Um, and uh, let's see, where's the, they, they had a thing in here. I was, I was actually surfing this at the Internet Cafe for, uh, uh, right sort of out in our parking lot here, and uh, it was kind of fun. Let's see, where is it? Where is it? Well, it had somewhere in here that had all the technology. Uh, where is it? I don't think I'll... Oh, maybe we'll have to do a Lyco search. Well, what they had was they showed the computers and how they put them together, and I was a computer guy, I, th I thought that was just a blast. Mm -hmm. So, now you said your hot site for the week was... You didn't even label it here. Yeah, the uh, page for The Tonight Show. Um, stumbled on this uh, surfing one night. And they're doing just a really nice job putting up information. Of course, the Letterman Show beat them. They had the, a homepage uh, quite a ways before Leno did. But no. I think if we climb through, we'll find that they've got some uh, quick times. Yeah, well, I can't play them here, but uh, so... Now, let's talk for a second. Yeah. We, we can't do audio, and we can't play video. Now, why is that? That's because we just put a brand new computer in for the, the Internet TCI Studio. We've been laboring along on a 46 all this time. We've got a 32 megabyte Pentium, high performance everything, but we've got to hook the speakers up. So we'll get to that. We'll get back to all that. So it's, it's nothing to do with our technical ability, folks. It's simply a matter of when you go and get a new system and you've got Netscape, you've got to go get all the little helper apps 
that'll help you solve all these little problems. Play QuickTime, play an MPEG movie, play an audio. So whatever. perhaps what you're suggesting is that maybe as our next internet for everyone, we should download those things and actually configure the system with the QuickTime and the uh, audio player. And all that you stuff. think we should show the whole, you know, messy process? Uh, well, we'll figure something out. All right. We'll figure something maybe out. Maybe next time we'll do a, a, yeah. a Jay Leno QuickTime. Yeah, the, the thing I, I liked about this was, um, you know, sometimes they give you jokes and stuff, and it sort of, it seemed to me like you sort of were viewing it to some degree, and I think that's sort of the aim that they're trying to get. It's sort of like, it's sort of like half viewing the show. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty slick. So let's look at some other surf pages. All right. Let's see. Uh, educational segment. We know just how well you like educational segments. This is uh, <coughs> called... What the... the this, is, this is called the yuckiest site <laughs> on the internet. Oh, I know you'll like it. And it's called Cockroach World. Okay? So here we go. We're going to visit the grossest family on the net. And here's this set of cockroaches. So we're going to find out the inside story about cockroaches. Here, Is I guess this actually somewhat educational? Uh, I don't know. I guess it is. Each cockroach eye is made up of 2,000 individual noses. Did you know that? I did not know that. Exactly. And now, before you look, uh, what's the cockroach leg covered with? Uh, cilia. Well, <laughs> cilia to you hairs to the rest of us. Oh. But congratulations, silly, silly. <laughs> Or it's covered with um, cereal from my pantry. I don't know. Right. Where's one? I can't find it. i got to find it. There's the one about the day in the life of this cockroach. It talks about what they do and where they sleep and when they hide and all that. And when the people leave... Let's, let's do a Lyco search and type in a day in the life of a cockroach and okay, see if that'll okay, zoom in. Okay, we'll see. Uh, bookmarks, Lyco. Now, see, one thing that's ironic is sometimes you'll uh, be... Day you'll in be looking the at a website life of... Okay, keep going. A cockroach. C-O-C-K-R-O-A-C-H. Okay. What I was going to say is sometimes you're looking at a site itself and you can't find the particular page on that site you were looking for, and it's actually faster to go back and do a Lyco search. Ah, looks like that's not number one. Probably. Well, folks, we're going to have to come back next month and tell you where we found the day, day in the life, life of the cockroach. cockroach. So we'll see you on the net, okay?